If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Whoa. Just, Justin, Adam, and I Noises. rambled for 51 minutes. Do our current events intro. Uh, we start off with talking about our trip to On It. We do a little recap. Uh, we talk about the good and the bad. Adam may have taken way too many supplements. Whoops. He threw up like a dragon. Way too many supplements. We talk about Splenda's new product. Looks like natural is now in style. Hmm. Um, and then we talk about 50 Cent. Long hair. Not the half dollar, but the rapper. Yeah. Who found, uh, who found, yeah, this is hilarious. $8 million in Bitcoin. In Bitcoin. Hey, look at that. Oh, hmm. look what's in my pocket. Uh, we talk about citizen scientists who are inventing shit in their garages. Oh boy, that could be scary. Alchemy! Planet of the Apes is coming. We talk about the CTE study of pro football players. Justin's fucked. College football players. Damn. And high school football players. I think Justin's safe. He wasn't the kind of person to tackle with his head. No, not at all. <laughs> we talk about the new XFL. What? We talk about keto and its brain protective properties. Could probably help with the CTE. Yeah, I'm gonna- Gobble that up. Adam does the absolute worst mention of <laughs> Organifi Gold Juice, but we are sponsored by Organifi Gold Juice. Not necessarily true. If we were another company, this might be a great strategy to say some shit like this. That's true. So we are sponsored by Organifi. So if you go to OrganifiShop.com and you enter the code MINDPUMP without a space, you'll get a fat discount. They also sell protein powders, green juices, a lot of different products. We talk about my son's Puberty transition. Growing a mustache. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. All right. Uh, we talk about body odors. Goes right right in hand with that. Um, and then we talk about the crystal deodorant that I gave to my boy, which I got from Thrive Market. Now, Thrive You're Market- such a hippie. Thrive Market has all kinds of natural, non-GMO, and organic products, which we consider to be better than, their na- than the non-organic versions. Now, we are sponsored by Thrive. Market. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, this is what you're going to get. It's, gonna, it's a lot of stuff. One month free membership, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more, and free shipping. We also mentioned infrared light and its benefit on people and some of the sham shit people are selling, which we'll get into deeper in the episode. Now, we did. Uh, have the Juve light people on our show before, and we did mention them, and we do have a coupon code with them. So if you're interested in far infrared light therapy, the best company we know of is Juve. That's J-O-O-V-V. If you go to juve.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get a discount off of their products. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, what has been the hardest part of being a fit parent? What kind of shaming do we get for being awesome? Yeah. Uh, the next question was, you know, we hear a lot about women dealing with body image issues and the many disorders it can lead to, but is that also becoming common <clears throat> among young men? Are young men starting to develop lots of body dysmorphia issues? And if it is happening, what do we think is causing this? Or has it always been there? The next question was, how do we feel about popular fitness influencers helping people uh, even though they may be taking performance-enhancing drugs. What do we think about the steroid fitness uh, professionals on Instagram, which makes up something like 95% of them? The, follow, the final question was, Tom Brady, you know, the second best quarterback in uh, football history. <laughs> Dude, he's already passed that all those yeah. right. He's, <laughs> he's, he's got, officially the first one. Brady yeah. the lady. Yeah. He's got a sleepwear. That's a terrible song, Justin. I don't think yeah. he likes that one. I don't think he's he got a sleepwear either. line with bioceramic material. That supposedly sounds high tech releases your body's mechanisms to enhance recovery. Gotta release the mechanisms. Is this science or is this magic? Find out. Ask your ask your unicorn if it works. Hmm. Uh, also, uh, I think this is the final day, right? When this it is. airs, is this it's airing? The final the, day. This is the final day of the month, Doug. Final, final. So this is your final chance to get a free mind pump T-shirt, which. Um, have been now confirmed, right? We've done now several studies that have confirmed that these shirts yeah, have bulletproof real one. mystical Bull, properties. Don't say bulletproof. Yeah. <laughs> They've got <laughs> mystical try that properties. Out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, all of that's bullshit, by the way. They yeah. don't have any of those things, but they are pretty awesome. You can deflect meteors. And in order to get a free t-shirt, all you got to do is enroll in one of our bundles, which have tons of value all in and of themselves. 
The most popular bundle, of course, is the Maps Super Bundle, which takes all of our Maps programs, puts them together, orders them so that you have one year of exercise programming. It's the most effective bundle that we offer, but it's also discounted, something like 30%, and now we're throwing in a free t-shirt. So it's your last opportunity to do that. This is it. No more bullshitting. Just go to mindpumpmedia.com and enroll in any of our bundles to get that free t-shirt. It's t-shirt time. T-shirt time. It is t-shirt time. How many reviews? We got 21 reviews. 21,000 reviews? That's that's low. That's low. Slow (laughs) week. Not too bad, actually. How long did it take you to read all those? (laughs) A long time. We have to give away 4,000 shirts. Yeah, we're actually giving away six shirts. Excellent. So the first up is Tim May. And then we have McKenzie, Voracious Val, Snowy Hockey Bum, Liz Honey, Waterboy04. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Thanks, guys. Whoa, here she comes. Watch out, boss. She'll chew you up. Whoa, here she comes. She's a man eater. Dang. You know, I hate it when Adam interrupts you singing. Whoa, here she comes. <laughs> Try, yeah. Trying to hear your song. <laughs> it's so beautiful. That was a good song. Man, we're back. That was a jam back. We're back day. home. It's You know what? There's just something about being home, dude. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it just feels good. It feels right. It does. It feels more yeah. righteous. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> a lot good. more righteous. More good. It's more uh, comfortable. It's more goodness. It's more good. <laughs> like truth, truthiness. We are yeah. the light. Yeah. We are the, the salt. <laughs> the you know what I mean? What is wrong with Whoops. Whoa. Oh, careful. Somebody just knock some shit over. Be, it's your bum foot. Sal's, uh, oh. I mean, uh, Doug's army box over here. It is. All right. He's got a bullet army box yeah. that he keeps some of his He's ready for stuff war. What'd you guys do? The when chimp you, is ready for war. What'd you do when, when you guys got home? Uh, after our trip, did you guys just oh, crash out? I took care of my two kids with the flu. Oh, yeah. So what's going on, dude? Oh, man. Oh, your whole house is sick? Yeah. Oh, such fuck a bummer, that. dude. Ugh. Uh, I made the most of it. Like, a long time ago, I took away the Wii and decided, like, hey, if we're not going to leave the house, we're going to have a Wii party. And so they were, like, totally, like, passed out, all fried and everything. And I'm, like, playing the Wii <laughs> by myself. That was your Wait birth? a minute. You're, you're like, hey, kids, you're sick. I'm going to bring out the Wii for yeah. me yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to play. Did I you do anything bored. for your birthday or is that all this week coming up? This weekend coming up, you're going to celebrate it. Yeah, this weekend. Yeah, I didn't do anything. Oh, yeah. What are you guys doing? Happy birthday. Thanks. Thanks, man. Yeah. Happy birthday. We're going to Seattle. So uh, Courtney and I just are going to spend yeah, just quality time catching up and being adults. What's in Seattle? Uh, just hanging out. Like I have actually family up there, but, um, she just decided to pick a location. We're starting to do this. Just try to pick a location, hang out and use it as an excuse to kind of, uh, catch up and, and reconnect. Dude, so that one market, right that one market, that famous market, everybody takes a picture in front of, you know what I'm talking about uh, in Seattle? Pike place. Pike, oh, place. Pike place. Pike place. A lot of fun, dude. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Jessica and I did a lot of fun, uh, shopping there, walking around. It's Activities. We're totally going to hit up like museums and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Oh, speaking of museums, I went to a great one yesterday. San the, Francisco, right? I did the, the really? Museums of Fine Art. Nice. And the one I went to was the Legion. I don't remember the name of it. Shit. Let me look it up. Anyway, uh, Legion of Honor. And they had uh, just some paintings from you know the 1500s and 1400s. Then they had Egyptian artifacts and stuff that were thousands of years old Dude, how cool they uh egyptian artifacts are like my favorite it's just fascinating because i'm looking at these it's weird you know when, when you're a kid you don't get it because you see it and you're like this is stupid or right. isn't that yeah. funny how that works when you're old when you're young it's just like there's nothing it's not this is boring i, I went to that museum when i was probably 17 <coughs> or 18 somewhere around there and it just wasn't that it's cool not the same so the first time a museum really hit me where I was like really uh, enthralled by it was when I went to the Louvre Museum in France, mm, yeah. which still is the best museum I've ever been to. Mm. It's where the Mona Lisa is and all that stuff. Oh, so geez. we were going through and I was probably, let's see, um, I was like 20, I want to say 21. So I was still pretty young and we're walking through, uh, no, maybe a little older actually, maybe like 24. So we're walking through and I had just I had done judo as a kid, and I'd gotten just started getting back into Brazilian or into Brazilian jiu jitsu. And I'm walking through, and it's cool, and I'm kind of appreciating it more than I did when I was a kid. But it I didn't have that impact until 
we're walking through some of the ancient Roman art, mm. and I see this tablet that's no bigger than, you know, maybe the size of like a little bit bigger than like binder paper, right? And it's this old ancient tablet, and I'm looking at it, and it's thousands of years old, which is kind of cool. But what was on the tablet was more fascinating. I'm looking at, and it was a tablet carved of two Greek, Greco-Roman wrestlers or, you know, uh, wrestlers from the, you know, from ancient Greece. So this thing's thousands of years old. And the move that one of the guys was doing on the other guy was a move that I had just learned in jiu-jitsu. Nice. No, was this a, was this like you saw the the image of him doing the move or it said the move? No, no, no. It was a picture. It was a, a, a sculpture. So it's like a tablet sculpture. Okay. Ancient. Is he doing like a hip toss or something? Uh, no, it's kind of like a half Nelson almost. It's hard to, ex- uh, to explain, but mm-hmm. he's he's got the guy in a really like uh, good position. And I'm like, holy shit. They were just teaching that in class, you know, a few weeks ago. And I'm looking at it and it, there's this fucking... Where the origin probably was, right? N- older than that. It's obviously older than that because they were doing it then. They learned it from someone. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it, it just... Uh, it, it just reinforced to me how knowledge is like that sticks around and it's just, it's effective because it, and it, because it's lasted. Yeah. The effective stuff stays. Yeah. So that really hit me like, holy shit. And then the rest of the museum was just mind blowing because now I'm walking through and I'm looking at all these things that are so old, but I wonder how much, you know, wisdom that we have today that came from, and obviously oh, yeah. there's a lot, there's a lot. I mean, you look at, you know, the ancient Greeks and their philosophies were just, I mean, they conceptualized the, the atom before we even knew there was an atom, you yeah. know, I mean, just crazy, crazy stuff. So yeah. it was, uh, it was pretty awesome. But yeah. Anyway, so we did the the uh, the museum of fine arts, and then after we walked through it, we sat outside, and it was a beautiful day in San Francisco. It was like sixty eight degrees, so it was it wasn't super warm, but it wasn't cold. Hmm. And we sat out in the lawn, and we just read for a while, and then we went through the city and got some coffee and um, and had a walk in the marina. Nice right. town. Yeah. Nice town. Sounds, how about, how about fun, you, Adam? Uh, we went to Oakland. So I was up in, um, first time I've been, Jack London Square. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, man. Yeah, it's yep. great. Yeah. Yep. Yep. My uh, my best friend's uh, wife, it was her birthday, and we had brunch set up over at Scott Seafood uh, in Jack London Square. And I was all the way in Oakland, and I was like, why the fuck? I was telling Katrina, I'm like, why are we going all the way to Oakland, man? I know, it's like the gem of Oakland, though. It is. So I didn't know that, right? So I was kind of, I was already kind of disappointed that we were driving this far for brunch, right? <laughs> but I was pleasantly surprised when I pulled up. I was like, man, this is really nice. I'll definitely come back here again. Where'd you guys eat? At Scott Seafood. Uh, so oh, Scott yeah. Seafood, it's right on the pier right there. They're good. Yeah, yeah. Scott Seafood's already good. I mean, they're downtown San Jose, so I'm, yeah. I'm familiar with, with Scott Seafood. Well, that must have irritated you more. It's like, I know where's the Scott Seafood well, right that's, next. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. I'm like, why are we going all the way to Oakland to go to Scott Seafood when there's one right downtown? I'm like, <laughs> is there some, are we like, is Oakland the central place for all the friends that are coming? I don't yeah. think it is, right? So anyways, we went and it was uh, it was beautiful, amazing food. They do, they did We did like this brunch where you just pay... Uh, fifty dollars a person, which it ended up being more like eighty. I don't know why. Maybe because we got other stuff. And then you have like bottomless mimosas, and you have this huge buffet of all kinds of stuff. Ooh. So yeah, it was really good. It was a beautiful day, nice on the water. I mean, I was uh tired because anytime we get back from our trips, I'm just mentally drained. Well, man. bro, you also how did you, how did you feel afterwards? No so, sickness, no nothing. Yeah, nothing, dude. So, so trip on that. Right? I got to tell how the story. We... I got to tell the story because it's a fascinating <laughs> story. So we're. Uh, hosting uh, their, the Onnit Academy and you know Kyle Kingsbury in particular showed us a, gr- a great deal of hospitality. Put us up in a home that they that the Onnit oh, Academy yeah, owns. They, they pulled all the stops. And the house is fully stocked with Onnit products, supplements galore. So pretty much anything you want. Now, uh, you know, I'm a supplement fanatic, if you will. I, I've been <laughs> addicted to them. And so I, so I, I know how to temper myself now because I've gone down that road. But while we're there, you know, we're just taking things left and right, trying things out. And so, and we put, we put this together later because at first we thought maybe you had the flu or something. Right. But you took in the morning the, the primal day pack, right. which includes alpha brain and a bunch of other things in there. Then you had- like Six or seven pills, actually. Yeah. Then you had more alpha brain at the house. Then you had a pre-workout at the Onnit Academy, which contained more alpha brain and other stuff <laughs> in it. Then you had a post-workout shake. Which had other shit. In you OD on Alpha Brain. Then we sat down to podcast with Kyle, 
and Kyle's handing out supplements. And I'm t- I literally said to you guys, you guys should be careful what you're taking because you don't know what you're mixing together. Yeah. yeah. And you know, but you guys just took you know. He, I think he gave you guys like five pills. You took them, and then like thirty minutes later. What happened? Yeah, there was a there was a shift, and I remember. And you know, here's a good example. So I know people always ask like this whole you know state change thing that I talk about. Like I get DMs all the time. Like, what do you mean by that? And how do you start practicing this? And this is a good example. So I kind of flashed on Sal. I uh, I snapped at a forum kid, and then I also snapped on Katrina all within like a couple hours, which is not like me. You know, like I'm not. It's not like me to do that. And I remember when, you know, you had said something to me after the podcast and you're like, bro, what's wrong with you? And I was like, oh, I'm just irritated. I was irritated. I'm so tired of talking psychedelics. And I was, I was, because I remember before the interview, I said, let's not talk about psychedelics sure, sure. while we're on it. Like, can we fucking do one can interview? We, can we make right. that Can happen? we do one yeah. fucking interview with a fucking on it person and not talk about yeah. fucking ayahuasca? Yeah. And Sal took us there. So I'm yeah. like, I was all irritated at him. But then I thought like, who cares? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like we haven't navigated through that before. Yeah. And and he and he made a comment to me afterwards, like, dude, what was wrong with you? You're just out of it. Or I was like, yeah. And I blamed it on being irritated by the psychedelic talk, which t- is bullshit in a sense. And I didn't put it together till we got home. I got home and I we were driving home, remember? And I was driving and I looked at you guys. I'm like, man, I having a really hard time keeping my eyes open. Yeah. And it's only like seven o'clock. You know, it's not yeah. late at all. And so I thought that was really weird. And then I got to the house. And I lay down for a second and I'm texting Katrina and uh, she made a comment about something about some coworker of hers hitting on her. And I, I totally made like a smart ass comment to her just, you know, out of nowhere. Right. And I could tell that it really bothered her. And it was just me snapping at her, which is not my style at all, especially over something like that. I'm not even close to the jealous type. And then some forum member made some poll about me on on the Facebook, and <laughs> I jabbed at him. And thank God he didn't get that much from me because I was actually like careful about. I was like, yeah, I don't want to fucking light this kid up. I'm just gonna say like a little jab, yeah. just don't poke the bear type of deal, right? But then I thought like, fuck, that was like back to back to back things that really fucked with me. That that's not me to to be that way. So I'm laying there kind of evaluating the day and then I just get like nauseous dude and like out of nowhere out of nowhere just nowhere I get really nauseous every time I look at my phone it makes it worse and so I set the phone down I'm kind of sitting there and I'm like dude do I have to puke and I'm like that's weird I haven't been feeling sick at all and I know Justin's really sick so I'm like fuck did I get Justin's thing that's weird out of out of nowhere and I don't have flu-like symptoms but all of a sudden I feel really nauseous and I go to the, the toilet and I projectile vomit, dude. I mean, I throw my brains up. All the food that we had just ate with Kyle, we had this huge, probably 14-ounce steak that his wife cooked for us. We had um, a big old salad. I mean, it all came up. Everything came up. And I did that three times, like just. Oh, that sucks. Really? Yeah. Especially with your ankle because you can't really, oh, yeah, so, you can't really get oh, down God. on the floor. <laughs> yeah, so I can't get down on the floor because my ankle. So, I'm, so the, oh, it's no. disgusting. I don't know how many people are going to like, but it's splashing up in my face because <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's too much of a distance, you know, from the water. So you're just firing from oh, the water. Yeah, it's coming so, out with some thunder. Yeah, so, so I, had to, I had to wash my face afterwards, brush my teeth, and I came out and asked you guys, I'm like, bro, this was so weird i just puke my guts out and i actually feel a little a lot better right after doing that you were fine what ha- so because here's what i noticed uh, and by the way doug followed a similar supplement regime to you that day because he took a lot of what you did you guys were going crazy with it yeah mm-hmm. he had a migraine uh uh and it started during the podcast and i noticed when we were recording so i'm you guys are the same way we're all like this now we've been doing this for so long right it's like you know, over almost a thousand hours of, of podcasting, I can sense when there's a shift in energy. Mm-hmm. And I can sense when it's, uh, you know, something someone said, something that's going on. We're really good at reading each other. And I can also sense when it's something else. And it was really weird. It was like the first 20 to 30 minutes, you know, you were your normal self. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, it was like, poof, like someone turned the lights off. And you sat back and you had this look on your face. I can't wait to see the video because there's video of all this, yes. right? So when it, when it goes live for on on it, you'll see the video. And I do recall 
you know, I looked at and you looked like you were having a tough time keeping your eyes open. I was. If there, if I, I remember looking at the cameras at one time, thinking if we weren't on camera, I would totally like kind of close my eyes for a few minutes while Sal's talking because I'm just like getting, getting my eyes are so heavy. I could feel it. I could yeah. feel like something's happening. Then I look at Doug and Doug is like rubbing his eyes and have a tough time. And at that moment, and this is why when we turned off the podcast, I said something. At that moment, I'm like, oh fuck, they took too much stuff like they're all it's hitting them because you took like four or five pills right before the podcast so about 30 minutes later is when you'll start to feel it right and sure enough i could tell like oh fuck something something's going on it must have been too much and you can you can definitely take too much of anything and have adverse effects and so then we get home and it's funny we get home and it's like after eating dinner at kyle's house and we were going to do all this work because we had all this work to do and you know, uh, you and Doug were like, oh, I need to go to bed, which is not like any of us, especially yeah. not like you guys or Doug, especially Doug's like seven 30. Yeah. It's right. Doug stays up till two o'clock in the morning every right. night. We were all feeling it. And I'm like, fuck. So I go upstairs and I'm, you know, doing some work on my phone or whatever. And I hear you come out of the room. And you're like, sell, <laughs> sell. And I'm like yeah. what man? And you're like, I just fucking threw up, dude, what's going on? I'm like, oh shit. And then we started to put two and two together. But yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, but you felt fine the next day. I, totally it, fine. I, what I felt like the next day, like I had a hangover, right? Like something had, like I did something to my body yesterday that would like really stress. That same feeling, right? So when yeah. you when you push the alcohol, you push the drugs the day before, yeah, I felt hungover, but not bad. Like I ate all normal. My stomach was fine. We all ate the same My food. body just felt like, ugh. Yeah. And, I, and I bet I was really sensitive too because- we just came off of this fast. I ran like a ketogenic diet. Then I've transitioned into a paleo diet. And I was just starting to kind of reintroduce more carbohydrates. And then while we were on this trip, we were kind of keto. Like we were eating a lot of sure. keto type. So I didn't feel like I had much in my system. We were eating low calorie too. So you're just sensitive on top yeah, of Yeah, I think I was yeah, just- Yeah, because we also had coffee throughout the day. Right. So you had all those stimulants. You had mixed all, all kinds of different supplements together. And you probably took- two or three times the dose of a couple of them all, all you know at the same time because i i can i know when i do that to myself it just feels like it feels like absolute garbage which i know people careful. are listening right now and thinking like what an asshole what were you thinking you know but you just you caught up in the moment of everything that we're doing plus it was really cool having we literally had it was a, all at our disposal yes we had every on it supplement you guys have ever seen it's stocked in this house everything too from their toothpaste to their fucking shampoo and soap and everything else yeah. they they provide like the, it's kind of cool the whole house is stocked with that mm -hmm. so you know you do that to a bunch of fitness supp ex supplement junkies mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know what I'm you know what I'm saying that was like that's what happened to us right there you just took a bunch of ex kids in candy store like yeah it's in you know what do you expect you take an alcoholic and you throw him in a bar for three days and then tell and you can have unlimited drinks if he wants and he starts sipping on some of the drinks next thing you know we're taking all this shit <laughs> mm -hmm. so my body said uh uh man. oh like funny yeah, well i'm glad happens. you're not sick um, so I, something I forgot to mention at, in San Francisco, when we went to the coffee shop, um, I know Starbucks now has Stevia. A lot of places will have Stevia packets or Starbucks will at least in some Starbucks, uh -huh. but we were in some, uh, local coffee shop. So it wasn't a, a chain one. So I get my espresso and I'm like, shit, I wonder, I hope they have something I can put in here. That's not, uh, artificial. And I look and there's a Splenda packet and it says Splenda Naturals. Splenda that. now makes a stevia-based sweetener. It has stevia and erythriol in it. Um, but and now here's the deal: it's highly processed stevia, mm -hmm. probably not nearly as good as the more raw version of it. But I got to do more research. Nonetheless, what a signal! What a powerful signal that they are. They can see that the market's shifting and they're starting to move in that direction. Because mm -hmm. Splenda is, I mean. That is a massive company. Right. The, the the makers of you know sucralose are huge, and now we're seeing them go in that direction. Hmm. That's kind of it's kind of cool. It's kind of evidence that you did know. Did the kids send you guys the Gatorade one too? Did no. you see Gatorade no. with their organic drinks? Do they really get the fuck out? You guys Gatorade? haven't seen it. No, Doug, you got to go Google Gatorade get, uh, organic. That's Just one Google, of my Google that. I am always talking shit about it. It just <laughs> looks, I know, we do, We talk yeah. shit, so that, that's why somebody sent it over to us, and they're like, you guys have been predicting all this stuff. Look how crazy this is. And then you sent over these the new Gatorade bottles with the organic. Uh -huh. And I haven't even, I mean, you, you couldn't see the back of the label. I didn't do my own research yet. I thought for sure one of you guys had seen it by now. Well, good. I mean, that's yeah, a but step the, in the right I want to see yeah. the label because what does Gatorade yeah. organic even mean? Yeah, what, does you know, that, what does that look like? Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know what it means? It means it's flavored with organic sugar. 
you know? Yeah. That's all. They get rid of a lot of the dyes and all that shit. Yeah, maybe. Here, look. You uh, find it, Doug? Yeah. Yeah. Newsflash, organic doesn't mean healthy. No, I know. It's just <laughs> still sugar water. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, but that's this is how the, this is what the market does, right? Yeah. So we, we take something and now it's a, a buzz term, so we slap it on a label. I've actually seen, no joke, I'm not lying, I've actually seen gluten-free on water. Bottles of water. <laughs> oh, I have two. Bottles uh, of water. That's, that's that's that I think is beyond hilarious. Yeah. Or low carb. <laughs> yeah. I've seen low Th- carb water too. Thanks. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks for <laughs> fat, identifying that. Fat free water. Yeah. Hey man, I don't know yeah. about you guys, but that wheat Fuck. water, yeah. that water made from wheat, that's <clears throat> it tastes like uh, bread squeezed from it's, the wheat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's beer. Of the you, know, Middle Earth. you know what water with gluten is called? Beer. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's called beer. Well, yeah. Why we're on current events, here's another one for you. You guys see the the news that came out on 50 Cent? He So he filed for bankruptcy oh, yes. in 2015. Oh, Mistakenly just found Bitcoins out of nowhere, Yeah, huh? so he, one of the, I think in two, back in 2000 something, I don't know what it was, one of his, one of his albums that he released, he, he sold and traded in, in Bitcoin. So he allowed- He to, let people pay with Bitcoin. Yeah, he let people pay with Bitcoin. And so motherfucker got, it has like $8 million in Bitcoin. He like, just found it too. Whoops. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just realized he had, had that. Could you, you here's, that's here's amazing. Something. What, you know what this tells me more than anything? There's, there's two strong pieces of evidence now that this guy is a fucking terrible money manager. <laughs> two pieces of evidence. One, you go bankrupt when you're a well-known brand and you've made lots of money and it just shows that you're an idiot with money. And two, you have seven million dollars that you just discovered because your accountants are scouring ways to fucking keep you from, you know, uh, losing everything through your bankruptcy. Yeah. Ridiculous, absolutely hilarious. Well, I, in his defense, Kay, because I don't know enough. Uh, here's the deal: bankruptcy is many times, especially at that level of that much money, many times a strategy. It's a strategy move, many yeah. times the guys, they and they and it makes for good news to say that 50 Cent went bankrupt, but really what he could have done was bankrupt one of his entities that right. is, is was, was not making a lot of money, and so, and it's a smart strategy, so he's not going to get nailed on it, but yet he's got fucking millions of dollars put, oh, put somewhere else. I'm sure he has a bunch. Yeah, it's like Donald Trump. I mean, it was like when they tried to hammer Donald Trump for all of his bankruptcies, but I mean, that's they were all business strategies and, and maneuvers, right? The guy's not fucking bankrupt, so more than likely when you see, you know, celebrities like that, that, that go bankrupt, quote unquote, uh, I think that they're still, well, I, don't I think know, they've been advised to do that. I don't know about you guys, but I get really, really, really excited when I put on a pair of jeans, an old pair of jeans, and I put my hand in the pocket, and there's like, oh, fuck, 20 bucks. Super excited. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> this is the equivalent of that time. <laughs> but like what, in yeah. millions. Yeah, like you yeah. put your hand in your pocket like, Seven million dollars? Yeah. Holy shit! What's well, the thing about Bitcoin? It's just there, you know. It's not like a tangible thing unless you're like still in it. So I mean, that's whoops. I have what uh, seven, eight million dollars in Bitcoin? That's ridiculous. I mean, he must have just started jumping up and down. So crazy. So we got some more news here. Some more uh, new news. Um, D, uh, do you uh, do it yourself? Biohackers are now starting to play with things like gene therapy and making uh, like, like reverse engineering things like EpiPens and gene therapy for animals. So there's actually people right now in their garages who some of them, many of them, have no formal education. What? They are figuring out ways or they're trying to research ways to edit genes so that like dogs don't have particular you know, inheritable disorders oh and stuff God. like that. But these are people that are not, you know, funded by anybody. They're not. Alchemy. A, they're doing it on their own. This is a straight alchemy. This is, I mean, what do you guys, how do you guys feel about that? How do you feel about these, you know, these, these citizen Unqualified scientists? Unqualified scientists just experimenting. Well, what qualifies you? Unregulated. Think about that. Yeah. I, it's, I mean, it's the ultimate like free market way to do it, right? It's kind of weird, right? Because part of me's scared because part of me's like, I don't want a bunch of regular people trying to put crazy shit together and whatever. Yeah. But that's the same. That's kind of the same fear. Where they create like a biohazard, you know what I mean? Like, oh, what if they do something really good? 
Yeah, it's or what if they true. do something awesome? Yeah, what if they do something really good? Yeah, I mean, there's all, there's big risks. And it's not both like sides. And it's not like government agencies have a great necessarily track record of right. ethics and right. shit like that. I mean, you it's know? like the the debate that we have about like even education versus somebody who's experienced, right? Was what if these guys? What if some of these people have put in a ton of ton of hours of testing things and actually have a lot of hands on experience and could potentially produce something that is of value and is amazing or whatever and they're and they're not there's nobody else their hands aren't in mm-hmm. it trying to manipulate mm-hmm. it and change it so yeah i don't know yeah the, kind of, the thing I that i could see that argument the thing i didn't that, know anything about this yeah you know, so this, this is all recent news or what yeah it's like becoming a thing they were having conventions where these biohackers are talking about how they're trying to you know edit genes how they're trying to create you know their own medicines how they're using you know their, their knowledge of technology and and science to do things that were formerly done because the technology's gotten so yeah. advanced now that the hurdles that you used to have to doing this kind of stuff which one of the main hurdles was money right like you needed hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to afford to be able to get to even get it the things yeah to, or just to get the tools necessary to be able to do these things mm. Well, that amount of money now is down to thousands. It's not hundreds of thousands or millions anymore. Now it's down to thousands. And the information's out there and information's easy to share now. I don't think you could stop it even if you wanted to. Well, this is just another Pandora's like, box. massive uh, disruptor, right? So it's like, you know, that same stupid word, but it's like in this industry, uh, you never had people, you know, have access to all these things before. Now there's communities built. I'm sure they're talking with each other and what worked, what didn't work. So it's like, it's just going to keep growing. This is how scientists were, uh, you know, a hundred years ago. Right. I was going to say, I, yeah. I would think someone like you who's so pro free market would be all for this. You I, I am, but there's these natural fears I have, right? right like, what right. if some dude like fucks with the virus and creates the next, you know, whatever. But uh, here's a thing too that worries me a little bit is uh, <clears throat> not so much that it's the current atmosphere of this worship. I've talked about this several times now, but this worship of science where the ethics are uh, mm-hmm. are kind of subjective rather than objective. So it's not, it's like I make my own rules and I'm going to worship science and any advancement is good. And if I can do it, I should do it right. instead of, you know, should I do this even though I can? And that's what worries me a little bit. Like if somebody is working with genes and they say, hey, you know what? Um, why not? You know, my wife is going to get pregnant. Why not use what I know, my technology, to see if I can make my child, you know, uh, less prone to disease? That sounds good. That sounds like a good thing. And not have the eth- ethical or moral compass because it's all subjective now, too. Mm-hmm. And so that may pose some problems. But to be honest with you, I don't think we control it. So it really, really doesn't make a difference, right? No. Yeah. I, yeah, it's it's tough because yeah, you do want people to lead with that, like that, like question before the intent of what you know the experiment is, and and whether it's even an ethical, uh, valuable direction for them to to pursue. But um, I, I, it is almost an arms race of like who could do it, who can do it first. Dude, they're they're already they're experimenting with their bodies, so they're making devices that they'll implant into their arm or into their, you know, their face or whatever. That'll. Uh, there was one device I was watching on this video where this guy implanted these devices, and they would react to things when he'd get near them by giving him like a buzz or something in his skin, mm. and so he started creating this so other like haptic feedback. Yeah, feedback? and he's created this like this uh, like his his brain patterns have changed to the point where he now has an alternate sense now through this device as to where he can feel things around mm. him rather than mm-hmm. seeing them. So I mean that's kind of cool, and he is you know he's experimenting on himself, but. I don't know, man. I read a lot of comic books when I was a kid. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> That's very, he's trying to be Spider Man. Yeah, dude. Come I remember on, dude. the lizard guy that healed his arm and turned into fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was cautionary tale. <laughs> yeah. In the comic books. You turn into a fucking monster. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Dr. Jekyll. Hello, Mr. We've been talking fly. about We've been talking about this forever. Yeah. <laughs> it just takes one yeah, thing, you know. Nerds. Right? Yeah. Makes some weird radioactive monster. <laughs> Here's another uh, another interesting thing that just came out. So, there's some, you know how they have that new CTE. Testing. So CTE is the chronic traumatic. Oh, this was the article you were reading on the plane. Yeah. So this oh, I'm is. I'm glad you brought this up. This, this is, is the the type of brain damage that you see um, in uh, uh, you know athletes football. or people who yeah mm-hmm. who've had lots of um, um, not necessarily con- concussions but 
just you brain know, trauma, just banging on their head. Yeah. But it's not. It, it's it's small enough to where trauma. we couldn't we couldn't see it with imaging unless the the person died, and then we could take the brain out and then look at it closer, and then we would notice. Oh, here's what's going on, and it made big news. Uh, not did you guys ever ago. watch the Will Smith movie? I did. Okay, a- a- excellent movie. What's the name of it? I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, yeah. Oh my God, you guys I are can't all fired. remember. You guys are all fired. Doug will get it. It's a yeah. It's I mean, in, in, along the lines of CTE, right? This is mm-hmm. a great. It's a great, great story. It's well, it, and they, it, I believe it. This was the doctor who first came forward and started actually trying to do all the research. Yeah, so. because we had those suicides, right? Where those <clears throat> athletes were were killing themselves, but yes. instead of sitting there, they're uh, shooting themselves in their. Uh, brains they were shooting themselves in their hearts yeah, junior Seau was was yeah. this was the one who really kicked it off Me as far as by shoot by he shot himself in the chest for that reason and left yeah. a note yeah. so that they would actually take an autopsy yeah go yeah, into yeah. his brain is it concussion yes that's that was the, the name movie. of it yeah okay. concussion so um but yeah uh, and so that kind of started this whole controversy well now they have imaging that you can actually see cte in the brain without having to you know take it out and uh, and dissect it and there was a small study that was done, and it, they tested 111 pro football players, or ex-pro football players. Out of 111 pro football players, how many of them do you think had CTE? 110. 110. Mm-hmm. 110. I remember seeing that. Then stuff. they studied college players. 53 college players. Out of 53 college players, how many of them do you think had CTE? 53. 48. Oh my 48. <laughs> then they went to high school. This is the one that scared me the most. High school students... They tested 14 high school football students, <clears throat> and they found that three had CTE. Even on that level. Uh, even on that level. So it's not like football, like pro football. So when you hear a stat like that, Justin, what do you think about like with your boys growing up and the, the possibility that they might want to play football? They watched their dad play football in a fucking throwback game just sure. recently. There's a good chance that when they get old enough, they're mm. really going to want to play. There's caution to it, of course. Um, it would have to be like the... the I, I, I don't know, man. I, I would go back and forth with it. I would struggle with it because um, you had so I know many positives from it. I've had so many positives. The 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 team element and just the the actual um, you know brotherhood and all that kind of stuff, like beyond the, the sport of it, I think is so valuable. But you could get that from a lot of different sports. So I could sort of reevaluate whether another sport might be an option or that. But I have seen some advancements. Like even when we were at CES, there was uh, companies that were out there that they had technology they're putting inside the helmet to um, find out like how many like traumas they had in practice, like on the helmet itself. Right. So then they would they would get all, gather all these data points, and then um, they had a, a team physician that would kind of go over the data points and see well this has had. You know, this individual had this many impacts throughout this week. Let's kind of back off. And, you know, and so it, it seems to me like they're making some efforts in that direction as far as like, okay, well, we know this is happening now. How do we sort of minimize it so it's just part of the game, uh, you know, or the tackle strategy that might change. So I don't know. The the game might evolve. I, bl- I believe it is. If you, I mean, if you're a, a fan of the sport like I am. And Just you, take the helmets off. You, wa- I you watch. I, I think that's a great idea. I mean. You watch, you watch the direction it's going right now. They're already evolving. I mean, <clears throat> and each year, the last like three years, I've noticed this, like, and I remember the transition as a fan watching. I didn't like it at first because you're like, oh, come on. That was a great hit, you know? Yeah. But they're 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 protecting these guys now with like the hits as far as anything. If their helmets accidentally collide together like that, if it looks like that the the defender is coming at them with the helmet at all, yeah, it's a flag. And a lot of times it's incidental, and the guy still gets flagged. But they're really trying to train the players, and you don't hit head to head at all anymore. So I, I believe, and I think they're going to continue to go that way. So I mean, the other option is what's coming out again. Did you hear XFL? XFL. Yes, it's 2020. McMahon. X, what do you mean XFL? FXL is XFL is it's coming. Making a comeback. Yes, 2020. It's already he's already announced it. It's here. Why is that an option? <laughs> I'm joking. It's oh. not really. It's not really an option. If it's uh, just another league. XFL was. Uh, I so, remember. So Vince McMahon, owner of uh, the WWE, WWE and. Uh, he came out with the XFL back in 2000, and I want to say which was a cool 12. concept back in the day. I mean, I watched a few. Yeah, of them. so they had like girls. They had girls in bikinis in yeah. the jacuzzi in the end zone, and oh they and it was they they let players give themselves nicknames like "He Hate Me," and yeah. you know oh, it was more it was if you could imagine.
imagine if the WWE it was like pro wrestling football. Yeah, it was yeah. Like, but you actually had some real good athletes that just couldn't that couldn't quite make the NFL that were playing on there, and so uh, it it it's right out the gate the first uh, couple episodes it had it broke records as far as ratings, so it was like holy shit, this could go somewhere. But it fell off a cliff, and yeah. then it became. It went from out. yeah, it went it went from being these crazy ratings to some of the worst ratings of primetime TV ever, and that's why it died. So the big question everyone's asking is like, what's going to keep it from dying again? And so they have su- supposedly big plans, quote unquote, of how they're going to do that. Well, so. I know the numbers, NFL numbers are down, right? They've mm-hmm. been down since the whole. I think that's what I stuff. think that's why McMahon is doing this because he sees an opportunity the when there's blood on the street. That's yeah. when you buy, right? So, well, this is- so do you think that his league is going to be like no holds bar, where it's like? you know like you can tackle any way you want or whatever it's going to be the opposite so actually one of the things they did say was that it'll be safer than the nfl so i don't yeah so that makes me wonder like maybe they maybe they will be no helmets carnage maybe they go no helmets dude maybe they're the first one maybe maybe he's that smart that he sees the all the controversy around the nfl they see that the the rates are down Uh and maybe he thinks the answer is be the first one to transition to this completely safe sport where we go helmetless and and tackle football i don't know i i'm just speculating right now i mean it was interesting because i i played both uh rugby and football and um you know coming from football and then transitioning into rugby was especially interesting because i didn't lose a lot of the tendencies that i had to tackle people that's like, your pattern dude yeah so it's like i would tackle people like and i would i am coming forward with my chest my shoulder and my chin kind of down and then coming up and driving into the person. And um, a lot of times I would make connection there to the chin and the head with the person. And then I had to like really alter that and like figure out how to do it in a different way and let them sort of like come to me a little bit more. I didn't realize that you went from football to rugby. I actually thought it was the other way That's around. A tough transition. Yeah, too. I did kind of both. So yeah. Did I, you fuck yourself up quite a few times? Yeah, because of that? yeah I did. Yeah. Well, yeah. I hit people like just like I would normally would and, and, and I almost broke my collarbone just because you know, you're just driving all of your Did people force. get pissed at you? Because I can yes. imagine guys that have been playing rugby for years, all of a sudden this yeah. football asshole comes over and hits me, and I'm like, hey, Bro, motherfucker, I had the most hey, epic hey, hit newbie. ever. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, the, the whole crowd was like, oh, shit. Like, they, they had a kickoff, and, and this guy caught it, and I just broke free. And I was just like, like laser guided to this guy. And like, he caught the ball, looks up, looks at me, and like tries to make a little move, but I didn't move at all. I was just coming, you know, vertically and got right under his chest up into his chin knocked it knocked into his face and and basically like just decleated him and we like went flying and uh and <laughs> fucked up his nose nose is bleeding and everything he he took the ball and he threw it at me and he was just all pissed off and you know everybody was like ah, but yeah it was totally like <laughs> barely a legal hit let's just say barely so yeah. there's two, it was so, an asshole move so two, so two things first off uh there's a study that i just read someone posted it i want to say in the forum that shows that there are there are potential uh, brain protecting effects from eating a ketogenic diet or taking ketones uh, post trauma. What? Yeah. So of course we know that we know that ketones are are, are brain protecting. We know this from mm-hmm. studies, but they're showing that it may be be able to be applied when someone has a concussion or oh, as like a that. positive thing. Yeah. Oh, so, of course that makes total. I so, think you're saying that it has a no, negative. No, 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 no. Oh, oh no. yeah. So if you're well, so, that just makes sense for yeah, inflammation purposes, right? Really, so period. And, and so it's like it's like after if you get a concussion, it might be a good idea to fast, yeah, uh, fast. or go into ketogenic diet. Now, now this is it, I said CBD. It, I said it might. So you gotta have to do your own research. This is based off of one thing that I read. Yeah. But pretty interesting. The other thing, the other comment I have on this is this. It wasn't that long ago, maybe 60, 70 years ago, that uh, boxing was a relatively, not super popular, but relatively popular thing that parents would put their boys in when they were kids. Like if you were a young boy and, you know, you could, in some schools even had boxing mm-hmm. um, where you could learn boxing and do it with- It's with, like self-defense. Yeah, it was just a sport. It was a sport like wrestling or football or baseball. And what it lost popularity because of- the uh, stigma of like being punch drunk, mm-hmm. of you know getting your face busted, all these different things, and so slowly parents started taking their kids out, and the people that kept going were typically the lower class minority groups, which is still to this day. If you go in a middle to wealthy class neighborhood, you don't find boxing gyms, but if you go into poor neighborhoods, 
you'll find you'll find boxing gyms until this day now like again you see a lot of these boxers coming through they tend to make up you know come from those 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 groups whereas back in the day it was a little bit more mixed it was still like that but it was a little bit more mixed and it's because of the that stigma football is a culture in America it's an American culture it's definitely a part of this country similar to how boxing is just it's much more ingrained and it's in schools right you mm. play it in high school you play it in college there's pop warner it's a major money driver for colleges it's a major it's it's this is where you get your your this is it's like the feeder system you know what i mean it's like the top of the funnel if you will mm-hmm. As more of this information comes out, as they're showing, if they keep showing CTE in high school students, I'll bet my last dollar that you're going to see parents uh, not let their kids. There's already a lot of that. It's already starting to happen. Oh yeah, there's a lot of parents. I wonder if Pop are Warner's- opting out of of football. Yeah, it's and I've talked to coaches even like from my old high school and from <clears throat> around the area, and numbers are are dwindling already. And I think it's definitely made an impact, you know, like oh, all this for information. Sure, for is, sure it has. has brought the scare, you know, upon. So. The question is how much will it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't, I, it's, it, how I, long will it stay? I really, cause I mean, something like boxing we've known for a long time is not healthy and we still, you still have it going on. It's, but it's, it's uh, way more rare. Like it doesn't have yeah, nearly the organization. Like, but here, think of it this way. This is the, what you have to understand is like, and they, they did this study on people that, uh, I think it was Olympic gold. If you, to win Olympic gold, taking steroids and doing all these things to your body if you died if you died like six months oh no they said if you knew what was it off of uh, if you took something that would guarantee you gold medal but you also would guarantee that you die in like 10 years would you do it no it was less than five years yeah it was a very short short lifespan they all said yes it was like 100% 100 across the board right so you got to believe that because the reward for football is so high that you almost guaranteed to be a millionaire if you make it that these people are and, and, willing to take that risk, still. and that's and that's what I'm saying. I I don't think it'll disappear like boxing again, but I do think that if you're in a situation where you have more options, which middle to upper class people tend to have, like when you have your young kid and you're poor and you got a little kid with some talent and he likes playing football, and you look at your options, you're like, well, the public school system here is terrible. Uh, this you know this may be his way out. I'm gonna put him in Pop Warner. I'm gonna let him play. But if you're, you know, middle class or upper class, and you're looking at your kid, and you're like, no, I'm not gonna let you play football. I know you want to, but the risks are high. There's, you know, we're, we're seeing all these studies on CTE, and so I, th- I'm just saying, I think we're gonna, and like Justin said, you're already seeing reduced because it's super organized. Yeah, like, you're gonna see reduced, but I don't think it's gonna be as big as you think. I'm more interested in what's gonna happen with the UFC right now because of all the stuff that's coming out with that, hmm. and how dangerous that sport is, and how little they make money. I was blown away by the oh, numbers I that know. Kyle said. The other day, it's crazy. I, I didn't know it was that bad. Like he said, something like boxing is it's a shame. Seven, what it is. yeah, the fighters make like seventy to eighty percent of the purse money and the stuff going out, and from pay per view and shit like man. that or whatever it is. I don't remember the stat that he gave, but it was a really high number. And I think it's on the interview we did with him. But and then he said UFC is like crazy the amount it's such a small percentage of guys that will ever make any money doing that but they're gonna so taxing on your body right too. but they're like, killing themselves yeah. trying to get to that point so that i'm interested in where that goes i think football won't die dude i think there's enough there's more middle class to lower class people than there are the yeah. upper class that are going to feel that way so i don't think they're a majority i don't, of, I don't know if it'll majority. i don't know if it'll die but i think oh, we're, we're seeing them we're no but it's a it's a it's a part of the culture it, it, because it's a part of the culture and because because I think the it's N- gonna because change. the NFL is It'll so evolve. powerful, yeah, it will evolve. Yeah. It won't. They won't allow it to die. It is too. It is too big. Yeah. It is too big. It's literally a part of our culture. Mm-hmm. Like it's a, the sport of yeah. our country. It's the yeah. biggest. Yeah. It's the most. Well, is it bigger than baseball? It's got to be. Is the is at it least big? popularity wise? I, you know. So I don't know. so here's the thing with baseball. Baseball is more profitable because it has a hundred and something games. Season. Yeah. So they can they can they. Make but which more, who gets more views? I think the Super Bowl gets more views because there's one game, right? So if you were to com- yes, again, once again, World Series it's hard is to seven, compare, yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. it's hard. So money wise, it might it might I, per per game per game per view per dollar. You're gonna NFL is gonna win. Yeah, yeah, it sees right there. Yeah, well, according to Wikipedia, <laughs> football is the most popular, the most popular sport. Yeah, it's definitely an American tradition. So I mean, no other country really plays it like we do. 
So we'll see what happens. And, but, and we're really starting to make yeah. look at what we've done with the NFL in the last ten years. Yeah. With all, now we, we started with one game overseas, then it became two. Now there's like multiple games. So we're waking. You know our what way. it reminds it's me? It's growing of, before it's going the other way. Yeah, you know what it reminds me of? It's almost like you're ever, you're ever in a situation where, and I hate to say this because. I hate to assume this, but you're ever in a situation where you get information and you're like, man, I wish I didn't know that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was I liked it better when I didn't know any better. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna start happening with football as these studies come out. You're gonna have a lot of people like, fuck. Well, man. well then yeah, and then you're gonna get the people like say, you know, me for instance. I like you start to think like, oh, you know, I have CT and you start blaming things the way you think or like you you know, like it's it becomes oh, no. it becomes a symptom, right? Yeah. It's my CTE acting up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. You don't want to. Yeah, that's that's a great point, Justin. You don't want to get caught in that victim, you know, mentality where you're, you know, everything's a consequence of some uncontrollable. Because let's be honest, we could all sit here and list all the shit that has happened to us, and all of us will have something yep. that can affect us. So it, you know, it's. I think people who are in, in in that category where they feel like victims, they think they're special. Uh, and yes, definitely some of us have harder lives than others, but you're not special. Uh, you know, everybody's had something terrible or challenging to them. And so you don't want to live your life thinking, oh, fuck, the, you know, everything's a result of this poor me because that's the outcome of that is not is definitely worse than if you go forward and say, no, I can do whatever I want. And nothing will stop me. I thought I read somewhere that the Organifi gold juice is supposed to help prevent CTEs. Is that no, true? not at all. <laughs> that would be a great selling point. <laughs> that's a, I'd be that's, tra- a, that's a ter- drinking it by the bucket. That's a terrible prog- product mention. <laughs> there, you you got to do better than that. <laughs> it is anti-inflammatory. Uh, anxiety. Could you imagine Organifi calling us up? Yeah. Like, you guys cannot make claims like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, you can't. Oh, well, have you guys been drinking like it, by the way? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me and Courtney all the time. Like that. I love it. it. It's so good. Yeah, it, it's just a great. It's a great one to have like later at night. Like, it's so anti-inflammatory, it's, isn't it? Yeah, very much. So you could tie down. it to that. It could be. It could you help. You could prevent. totally speculate. <laughs> yeah, you're you right. Could yeah. Completely speculate. Then, you know what? Those fucking supplement companies. That's what they they do, man. They take something like that, a little bit of information. It's anti-inflammatory, and CTE could be caused because of your, your inflammation. Yeah, inflammation. Therefore, therefore one plus one equals twenty five. Right. Yeah. Therefore, right. <laughs> and equals yes. That's crazy. That's dude, common, dude. Yeah. That's, so you know what else is funny? So you know my boy's 12 right and puberty's starting to kick in so it's fucking hilarious. oh is his voice changing uh, voice is changing so he's already got this thing going on <laughs> and i'm exaggerating Such a fun i'm face. exaggerating but it's like that yeah. and he's getting this little like little mustache peach fuzz yeah a little on. peach fuzz you know you know when you get like should you get him his razor kit yet so you yeah so my Come ex on, Dad. my ex is like he, sh- he should start shaving pretty soon and i'm like no, it's fucking peach fuzz. I'm not going to shave. Yeah. It's so, do you remember that when you were like 12, 13, where you had like this little peach fuzz above your lip and you thought you looked cool, but you look at your old pictures like, I look like Yeah. Door. I had well, a couple that's... like sparse like hairs on my neck. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, I'm getting so, a beard so that's on my neck. He's getting some of those. And then here's the best part there's a moment when your kids' hormones change their. Uh, their skin biome, microbiome. Oh, where they start to smell, dude. I remember it's a different smell. Like, like <clears throat> little kids can smell. Okay, mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. a there's a myth there that kids can't smell. Now kids no, can fucking yeah, they stink can too. Smell. But it's a different smell. When they go through puberty. I remember my- I can smell the testosterone. I remember having this conversation with my parents when my little sister went through that because she was young. It was early. It was earlier than what they anticipated. I'm like, mom, I think you need to have Sarah start wearing fucking deodorant. Like- she smells, she smells and they like, have no idea. Either. Yeah, yeah, That's right, because you're a kid, you're playing around and stuff like that. She's that young. She's not thinking about that, but you can tell her body odor started to change and smelt like somebody who would have BO when she's just this kid playing around and you don't know any better. So, yeah, absolutely, there's That's, a, it's, a it, distinct change. Bro, right? it's a smell signal, bro. It's a smell signal letting other people, your, you know, the opposite sex, you're let flowering. them know. Yeah, like, oh, here we go. I'm starting to go through these changes yeah. or whatever. It yeah. kind of how, sucks. How weird is it in, in that we that we've evolved though totally. that at one point that was probably a smell we desired and we wanted. Come on, bro. Isn't that weird? It's, what do you mean uh, at one point we do now? Think about it. Oh no, I don't. Like, uh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> Think about it. Hold on a second. Uh, maybe Think, you, bro. Ooh. Maybe you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't tell me. And it, like maybe you don't things. recognize it as a bad smell, but you can't tell me your girl doesn't have a distinct smell to her her own skin and it's not something that's a, that smells bad to you but you may be attracted to it this is true look they've, they've done i don't i'm not going to argue this because this is the studies are, are very clear in this where they'll have men wear a shirt and then they'll take their shirt off and then they'll have 
their wives try and smell it and tell them which one is their husband. They'll all be able to tell. Uh, where, you know, when you were a kid, I, I remember this distinctly. When I was a kid and I'd be hooking up with girls, just smelling their hair, their skin, anything that I could smell that smelled like there was just such a, it's all those pheromones. Yeah. See, now that's creepy. funny. I remember that as a teenage boy and I, and now as a man, I don't feel the same way. So as a young boy going through puberty, experiencing that. You were supercharged, that, bro. Yeah, yeah. At that, yeah I, I agree. <laughs> like at that time, and I remember like smelling my girlfriend, like she would be, didn't, just woke up from sleeping and her breath or everything. And most people would think that stinks. I didn't think that, I thought it smelled yeah, so it good. a lot of gross stuff. I'm not going to mention Yeah, it. that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of smelling yeah, going on. Way different now, though. <laughs> yeah. Way different uh, now. Yeah, I was smelling everything. Yeah. You wanted to make, yeah, so same. anyway, yeah. so I gave my son, so I told my son, like, we're going to start wearing deodorant. So I got him the. Um, the the crystal one that that you know the one that uh, that Doug got from Organifi yeah. oh, excuse me excuse me from Thrive Market sorry Thrive Market has these natural uh, you know body um, products so like skin products hair products Doug got that one you got that one Doug yeah he got yeah. me the crystal deal oh he got it for you for me so what the crystal does is it's salt it's these type of salts that you rub under your arm and then it prevents the proliferation of the bacteria that tends to cause BO. Mm. So I got him that and I'm hoping that'll work with him because we like, again, we read this on the plane. Remember I showed you, I was reading uh, discover magazine uh, over the last 30 years, the average uh, amount of sperm in a man's ejaculate has dropped 59%. That's huge, dude. 59, 59% and just 30 years, right? In 30 years. Wow. We know testosterone That's in levels, our lifetime, There's a dude. lot just sucking us dry. Bro, we know testosterone levels are dropping. And now and then and now we see sperm counts are dropping. And it's environmental. For sure yeah. it's environmental. Yeah. 100%. It's all the toxins, everything. And girls are going through puberty earlier and earlier, which can also be the result of it could be a result of just being overweight, but it can also be a result of these hormones and foods. These yeah, dude, all, all the shit. Stuff. And so all these skin products, the reason why I'm bringing this up is all these skin products, hair products, deodorants, all these you know, perfumes, colognes, they all, unless they're these ones that specifically say they don't have them and they're not in their natural or whatever, they contain chemicals that are known as xenoestrogens that can act like estrogens in the body. And, you know, if you use them once, twice, whatever, it's not going to make a big deal. But if you use them over the course of, you know, five, ten years and you combine it with your hairspray and your hair gel and your perfume and your deodorant and your lotion and you start combining all these different things, it's causing some weird shit. I, I, it's part of it, right? It's all the environment. It's really mm -hmm, weird shit. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving him the crystal. I'm hoping he doesn't- Yeah, they keep us, keep us posted on how it's working. Yeah, it's crazy. It could also be uh, mating pressures. This was something else that uh, I was thinking about the other day where um, the, the, the signs, the obvious signs of testosterone aren't necessarily as desirable as they used to be. And so maybe- you know, maybe women aren't choosing men that way and they're mating late, but it's too soon. It's 30 years. It can't be that fast. It's got to be environmental. It's got to be. Hmm. I don't know. Bring on the uh, the beta bird. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Sincerely Jazz. What has been the hardest part of being a fit parent? You know, it's, uh, what's funny about this is it's basically... That I have no kids. The ba yeah. <laughs> basically, the challenges you have... One funny thing. ...being a fit person are similar. It's just amplified because parents tend to judge each other mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I first noticed this when, um, when my kid, my son, who's my oldest, uh, played sports. So we had him play soccer, and at the end of the game, it's a, you know, obviously this is what happens at the end of you know these these games when you're when they're kids is a parent is picked to bring the after game snack, and never do parents bring anything that's even remotely healthy. It's never. almost they, they treat it like it's a treat, and it's always garbage, always garbage. And I remember the first time this happened, the parents were given out um, like these big old like massive cookies and then this uh like not, it wasn't even juice it was like high c something and gummy candies so it's like three things it was a cookie gummy candies and this drink 
And so I walked over there with my son, and he's super excited. He's going to get all three of them. And so I told him, I don't want to say no, but I told so him. you give him one choice. I said, you have to pick one. Just yeah, pick that's one. That's what I've done, too. And then the parent goes, oh, no, there's plenty. He can have all three. Yeah, and no. I'm like, no, 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 I just, just, just one only. And the parent, the mom looked at me. She's like, well, why? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's just, it's just a lot of, and I'm like, what do I say? Do I be honest yeah. and tell her it's a lot of sugar or do I lie and make up some shit so I don't hurt her feelings? So I chose to be honest and I said, oh, it's just a lot of sugar. And she's like, oh, it's just, it's just one time. It's not a big deal. I'm like, well, I know that, but you know, it's just, you know, it's too much sugar for me. I tried to make up some of the stuff and then we left and I, and it was, that was the first time I noticed that that judgment that you get from other parents because it reflects on them, I think. They feel mm-hmm. bad about right, themselves. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I had the same thing with uh, sports like that, like, you know, in the after thing. Like, I actually had to, like, change the whole league because um, they had it structured so this this ice cream <clears throat> company would show up right after every single practice, not just every game. <laughs> That's so great. Practice, too? Every fucking practice. And then the kids had a free pass for their first, uh, ice cream. Such and a great so hustle. They didn't even give a shit about like practicing. All they were doing was talking about like the ice cream. Can I get some Gatorade? And then I want to go get some ice cream. And I was like, this is toxic. Like, let's get the fuck out. Like me and my <laughs> wife were angry. Like, and we, we, we actually wrote them a letter and everything. Like, this is a horrible uh, way to set up these kids, you know, nutritionally and like have them like totally distracted us from like having a healthy activity that we're trying to promote, you know. And, and anyway, we're those asshole parents, right? We're running everybody's party, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we just we just like no. And so we got a we went into a different league, and um, yeah, there was more parents that sort of got it, but yeah, you're gonna run into that a lot. I mean, you're gonna run into because what's normal at somebody's household isn't normal in another. And, and that judgment also comes when like you have kids stay over, you know, and like you're, you're feeding them food or, you know, or your kids stay over at their house and they're feeding them like, you know, like lucky charms and shit in the morning and, you know, it's garbage. And- it's, it's funny that we shame parents for something like this, but if you were to like, let's say you and Courtney were on the soccer field or what like that, and you started just physically abusing each other in front of fucking everybody. People would look at you like crazy because of the example that you're that you're giving these kids at a formidable age, right? right. Or if they found out that you have this verbally abusive home and stuff like that, then you would be shamed for that. But yet, the what we feed our kids, we are setting them up for the future, and we're for, And right now, you're these are very formative years for them, and the way you feed them could potentially set them up for the rest of their lives. But nobody wants to fucking talk about that. No, because like why is why why do I shame you for wanting to be a, a healthier or make good choices for your kid or help help form him to be a make better choices for himself as he gets older into manhood? Right now, at these early ages, when it probably matters the fucking most. But then it's it, it's no logic. There's no logic yeah. there, it went, for a parent, for most parents, at least parents that care about their kids. The biggest insecurity that exists is, am I being a good parent and or am I doing things that are bad for my kids? If someone's doing something and it brings light to something that you did that was different and you consciously know that this other parent's doing something better than you, it immediately shines a light on this insecurity of yourself where I'm not a good parent and you don't want to fucking deal with that. Like, you don't want to hear that. I don't, you know, if I see this parent over here is playing with their kids and reading them stories all the time and super engaged, my instinct to protect my own ego would be, oh God, they're doing too much stuff over there. Well, that's so ridiculous. You don't need to do a helicopter parent. Yeah, you you know, and it's, 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 this is a big thing. It's way more common too among moms than it is among dads. Moms, I've seen this firsthand, can be terrible with this where they shame each other for doing particular things and it's, it's fucking ridiculous and it's only just because it's a reflection on yourself. Like if I'm, and this is anything, it's not just food, it's vaccines, it's education, it's, uh, decisions, any kind of decision you make for your kid, if someone else makes a different decision and has their reasoning for it, and part of the reasoning is it's better mm-hmm. than your decision, you are immediately offended. That's your instinct. Your instinct is to be offended. Like if I, you know, my kids go to, uh, you know, they, they go to this particular school, right? If I had a parent come to me and say, oh, my kid went to that school, but, you know, I sent him to another school because that school is really bad and named a bunch of things, instinctually, you know, I'm going to want to kind of be offended a little bit. Like, what do you mean I, that, you know, I'm sending my kids to a bad school? 
I could sense that. I could see how that would happen within me, but I'd have to kind of control it. But to, a lot of people are so fucking unaware. Why, why are we all naturally like that too? Anyway, I'm not even a parent and I'll see, uh, you know, there, I, so I have to admit that I still have, I have that in me where I'll look at the way someone's raising their kid and I'm like, fuck man, why are you not saying anything to your kid yeah. right now? He's at this, yeah. these important, this important age right now. And you're just allowing him to stuff candy after a bit of candy. And he's, God forbid you say something and you don't uh, have a kid. Uh, you will get yeah. destroyed. I, and I know that because right? like, they don't want a discussion from you. What they're going to say to you is you don't know. Cause you don't have kids and a discussion. No talking. Right. And I lose yeah, as if like me. you can't have a fucking opinion because you don't have kids. And there's a little bit of truth in the sense that when you have kids, you can, you, you know, you can experience the full gamut of it. Doesn't mean that someone else can't fucking have an opinion, especially not a fitness professional who, what, like what you're saying is a hundred percent true. It's not like, it's not like you have kids and all of a sudden bad food is no longer bad. Like, right. You don't know what you're talking about, Adam. I have children and the rules of fucking nutrition and physics don't apply anymore. Right. Like these foods are not, they're healthy. It's absolute bullshit. I've, I've felt this so many times. I feel this when I go to a birthday party. And I've had parents, and it's funny, I don't let it bother me. It used to bother me, and I would actually jab back at people. And I did this once at a party really bad and really made someone feel terrible. And in the, you know, the, at the immediate uh, time, I felt good about making them feel bad. My ego felt really nice that I, I shut someone down. But then afterwards, I feel absolutely terrible. And this is when I go to a birthday party, and they'll be serving you know, pizza or something for the kids. And they'll ask me, Sal, you want some... Have some. Why aren't you eating some pizza and cake? Because you know all the parents are eating along with it. Like, oh no, I'm. You know, I don't really. I ate earlier, or no, I'm cool. I don't want any. And then they'll be like, oh come on, man, it's just one. What's the big? You don't have to always be a fitness guy, or one's not going to hurt you. You're so lean, or you look so fit, or God, don't you miss pizza? It tastes so good. And it used to piss me off when people would do that because it would put me on a spotlight because they usually say it in front of a lot of people, mm -hmm. and I also know where it's coming from. It's to make themselves feel better because if the fitness guy eats the pizza, now they feel better for eating it. So it's their own thing. So it used to really bother me and I would always, and I would kind of do a little jab back or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day, man, years ago, I had uh, a family member who was just, because I wouldn't drink a beer and was just, you know, making fun of me like, oh, who cares, man? You can have a beer, have some fun, man. You never loosen up, man. Why don't you just loosen up? What's the big deal? And so I walked over to him. I pulled a shirt out of his pants. So I pulled a shirt up and I slapped him in the stomach. Psh, he's a he's a, he's a he's an overweight guy. And I slapped him in his belly. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, you keep enjoying your beers, bro. And he fucking shut up. And it destroyed him. Like the rest of the party, like he was in the corner real sad. And I felt super, super bad. When I did it, I felt good. But afterwards, I feel bad. So I don't let it get to me anymore. It's just... People are going to have their own challenges with it, and I'm just going to do what's best for my kids. Yeah, I think that's really it, – it's about what you have – like what you hold as your standards and like in your house and like what how you operate. And if people want to check you on it or whatever, that's fine. But for me, I, I, don't, I don't go around like – judging too harshly these other families and the way that they have it all structured that's your rule system but my kids you know when they're in your environment still you know i want to maintain what what i want them as far as health wise to to consider and uh so it's just like hopefully they respect that you know of them coming in and then i'll respect you and what you're doing to your kids the same but let me let me do my thing you know, and then maybe in in a sense, it'll affect people around me. I, I feel like what we see happening right now, just in just nutrition period, we just earlier talked about, you know, the sweeteners and things like that. I really feel like the generation coming around like is is going to be different about that. I think it's going to be more normal. There's more awareness. Yeah, I think there's going to be it'll be more normal that you go to a soccer game. And right now you guys probably feel alone. Like you're the one or two parents that like think like, oh my God, I can't believe they're serving ice cream here. Mm -hmm. I think real soon here, they're going to be at least 50% of the parents are going to feel that way. So yeah. once that starts getting some trash, Bro, this, it will, it's, it's like, I mean, it's not as extreme as, as cigarettes, but it does. It feels like, like it's a stigma to me. It's just like, what, why would they like do all this like exercise and work to just go unaware and eat a fucking huge bro, ice cream right bro now. you even get pressure from kids cuz now think of this imagine your kid is 10 and it's your turn to bring the <coughs> snacks and you bring 
fucking healthy you know, stuff. Yeah, you bring like stra- <laughs> you bring strawberries and water. You're the dad who brings fucking celer- oh, dude, celery celery and carrots. Fuck. Now celery the, and carrots. Yeah. Well, now your fuck kid, Sal. <laughs> now all the all the kids are like orange Man, and blueberries. Your dad brings crappy snacks. Yeah, like, skip, what, skip Sal's day, dude. Yeah. Dude, it's yeah. funny, man. Sal brings coconut oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tablespoons for everybody. Broccoli. Mm. <laughs> Next question is from Michael Hargood. You often hear a lot about women dealing with body image issues and the many disorders it can lead to, but do you think it's becoming more common for young men to be developing these types of disorders? What would you recommend for an underweight male teen dealing with body dysmorphia? This reminds me of the interview we did with Jason Phillips. So if you haven't gone back and you listened to that interview, Mm -hmm. make sure you listen to that interview. And I will tell you that before we interviewed him, I would have told you that um, maybe it's on the rise, but for sure this is an issue that women deal with mostly. And he actually argued that and said, I I completely disagree that uh, there's as many men that deal with this issue. It's just we don't talk about it. We don't report it. Right. We don't talk about it. We're, We're afraid to bring it up. And so... And you're seeing more of it come forward now, and I think that's just people being uh, uh, allowing it to happen. It's the, so they do they do do studies on this, and the statistics do show that it is on the rise. It's mm. that the amount of men now that have. And do you think though that it's on the rise because it's actually on the rise, or do you think it's on the rise because we we're becoming more aware of it? So to to it could be both, um, but I do think a large part of it is because it's it is on the rise, and I'll tell you why. When you look at the value that we place, the, the primitive values that we place on each other, men and women, mm. uh, a woman's hierarchy in terms of her value to potential mates or whatever, uh, how healthy she appears, her body, her image, her youth, is ranks higher than a man's on that ladder. A man's is typically uh, status. So sense of humor, how much money you make, you know, how alpha you are. And body is kind of up there as well. However, you often see more, you know, not so fit, not so good looking, but very successful businessmen have the pick of the litter, if you will, when it comes to women. And you see less of the reverse. Like you don't see women who aren't necessarily attractive or not very fit, who are also successful, who have their as big of a pick as the man would. So it's just valued more with women. Women know this and they've been advertised and marketed to this way much longer than men. But fast forward now, modern times, there's more of a value being placed on how a man looks, both by women, but more so by men. Men used to not judge other men so much by their physical appearance. It was more by their physical performance, like what they could do, what they could achieve, and it's become more and more popular now to look a particular way. Well, and then, it's got to be it's got to be social media like, yeah. correlated and uh, like online dating. I mean, both of those factors alone, I would feel um, you presenting yourself and having to do that in a very like uh, quick fashion. So you're gonna want to try and make yourself look the best and the most appealing. On top of like, yeah, I might be funny or I might have all these other you know monetary sort of you know status. Um, that, that, that I have as value, but at the same time, like you got to capture the attention. And so like, Mm -hmm. this becomes an obsession for a lot of men now, I'm sure to, uh, present themselves at this like ultimate. Well, the question question is though, are we on a overall rise period? And that's more than anything else. Like is, is, is is it, yeah, I would, I would argue that. It's just a rise all the way around that men have always had these issues. It's just becoming more, we're exposing it more through because of what we see happening in our society right now. Mm. And you touch on social media, man. I, I can't, I'm really interested to see where we are in 10 years due to things like Instagram and Facebook. I mean, I think it's doing a lot more harm than people talk about. I think oh, yeah. that it's some, there's some challenges that we're going to start to, See, are they going to become more clear? Like we can, we're starting to guess, and we see a little bit of it, but it hasn't been around long enough to see the clear challenges. And here's one of the psychological things that happens with social media: your, the the part of your brain that judges where your status is with the people around you is actually very primitive. In fact, it's uh, it can be argued that it's one of the most primitive parts of the brain, maybe even more primitive than the part of your brain that recognizes you know, trees or faces even because, and it's, it's the, this, uh, knowing your status or whatever is present in most creatures on earth. So it's a very old thing that we all have in common. 
And one of the uh, the signals that we use to judge our status is by what we see around us. Now, if we live in our neighborhoods, let's imagine for a second we don't have social media, we don't have internet and TV, and we're just walking around our neighborhoods, your point of reference is the people around you. So I'm comparing myself to my neighbors, the people I go to school with, you know, those types of people, the people that I see every single day. And so I may see, you know, someone that's kind of fit looking, but if I have a six pack, for example, I'm going to stand out around the people I see. I'm not going to run into too many billionaires. In fact, I bet you can walk around your entire life and never run into a billionaire. That's how rare they are. But if you have social media and the internet and all this stuff showing you all these things all the time, it, it, it presents this alternate reality where it's more common than you think. It's like normalcy. Right. Yeah, like you see, like if I go through Instagram fitness, my brain will start to perceive that there is a lot of really fucking ripped, buffed, super so, successful dudes. And here's what I tell people yeah. that think that, that that are sucked into this world of seeing and following these people that show these photos of them ripped year round, which most of them are bullshit or not. No doubt, if you're fit, like that next level fit, you use the gym, right? Just pay attention when you're in the gym next time. Look at the gym. Look around. Actually, and that's look. even biased, right? Right. That's even people. That's that what I'm. Out. That's yeah. my point, right? It's already extremely biased because mm-hmm. all fit people are going to the gym pretty much, right? I mean, for a majority, right? Unless you're doing something else right. as your way of fitness. But I'm talking like the super shredded that we're posting on Instagram, like crazy. Yeah. And look around your gym and find one of those people. You'll be lucky to find one for sure, two or three, and you're in the place where they all would be at. So just shows you how rare it really is. It is. I mean, if I think about it this way, if I'm super into basketball and I'm just always looking at these guys, looking at these guys, looking at these guys, my brain, whether I know consciously or not, my brain, the primitive part of my brain that tells me where my status is in society or my, which, that's a very important thing, by the way. If you have a very low status, perceived low status in society, that changes your brain chemicals. Mm-hmm. It changes how you walk, how you talk, how assertive you are, how many risks you take. And when you start to exude that, it actually limits your opportunities as well. Because when I exude less confidence, I'm gonna, less people are going to give me less opportunities. So it's this like positive feedback loop where it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So it's very, very important. But if I'm looking all the time on Instagram or social media at all these massive basketball players, I may think to myself like, man, there's a some fucking tall dudes. Like I'm just not that tall. I'm a short guy. Walk around. How often have you ever run into a seven foot guy? I think in my entire life, if I exclude going to an NBA like game twice, one time in my entire life, I think I saw a guy that was seven foot. That's how rare it is. Yeah. So it's unfair to compare yourself to all these people that you see in social media and stuff because it creates this bullshit, you know, like status in your mind. You're like, oh, wow, I'm worthless. I don't look anything like the people in the magazines or on the the social media. I don't have nearly the success. I'm reading this story about this 25-year-old who just became a millionaire who invented something. Like, I'm an idiot, obviously, because I can't do that and I'm already, you know, you know, however old you are. Like, it's just not, uh, it's just not fair. And so there's two parts of this. One is consciously remind yourself of that. That's one. And the other part is to acknowledge that there's a, an unconscious part that you are out of, that's, that's out of control for you. And that the only way to influence that subconscious or that unconscious part of you is to limit your, the amount of time you spend on social media. Like, be smart with the time that you spend on it. Don't sit there and waste time flipping through pictures and well, just and reinforcing one, that. Bullshit. One way to do that is to evaluate the people that you're following them and why you're following them, right? So most people that have an insecurity like this don't even realize it, but they're making it worse because they're following these people they want to look like. Mm-hmm. And so unfollow all this. Like if you follow, if you got a, if you got like, let's say you got 300 people you follow, you know, or more and 80% of them are these people that look the way you want to be. And they provide you no other value. Yeah, and they provide no – get rid of that shit. Like, stop following those people. Like, you know, at least, and, and I'm not saying that you can't follow your favorite fitness person who motivates you. Like, that's fine if you got one or two people like that. But do you really need – a hundred fitness people that yeah. post images of themselves and with their shirt off or in a bikini every single day. Like, are they really providing value or are they feeding something that's an addi- in, addictive to you and that's an insecurity of yours? You got to really ask yourself that because I feel like 
somebody like this, like myself, who went through body dysmorphia, we've talked about our own insecurities growing up. You know, of course, I'm looking at all the magazines. Like, that's the worst thing that this guy, sh- a kid like me, should do. Mm-hmm. If I think I'm already super skinny and I feel insecure about that, then I'm reading all these magazines and that aren't really providing very good information for me. And it's just a bunch of pictures of guys I really want to look like. Meanwhile, there are genetic anomalies. And on top of that, they're taking steroids. Yeah. So stop feeding your stop feeding this potential addiction that you have to this look that you want so get rid of that that would be my first advice to a teen because more than likely if you're a teen i'm sure you're inundated with all this social media bullshit and start following people that are providing more i tell you what if you want to build if you because he said what rec what do we recommend to an underweight male teen with body dysmorphia i tell you what if you're into working out you're into lifting weights um obviously we have programs i highly recommend because uh we wrote them we know they're good but if you love reading about this kind of stuff and you really want and you but you also are aware that you don't feel so good about yourself with you know like you said body dysmorphia buy the old books go and get the old ones written by like Eugene Sandow and you know all these strong men from before steroids because although they are very muscular and they look incredible they're all much more realistic and the advice you'll get from them is probably better anyway mm-hmm. next question is from Mike Physique how do you feel about popular fitness influencers helping people reach their fitness goals since they may or may not be taking uh, performance? What a nice transition, huh? Yeah, yes. Yes. What a natural transition. The same group of people uh, here. I yeah. have I have no problem with people helping other people reach their fitness goals as long as the and of course it's uh, you know they're free to do it so I don't I wouldn't want to force them to stop anything but I have no problem for shitty people doing it too. Yeah, that, it's a free market. It's, it's your right. cho- it's your choice. But right. personally, personally, right. you know, when I see bad information, when I see like <laughs> here's what I hate. <clears throat> I really hate this and we're talking about the body dysmorphia. If you're if you're on gear, like don't say that you're not. Maybe don't say anything at all, but there's a lot of people on there that are like, "Oh no, I'm all natural and I'm this and I'm that." And it's like but you're not like be you just honest a little bit. The waters. Yeah, just just be honest because it's it's almost like you're trying to make yourself look better by saying that you're you're not on them. And I know I'm in the industry. I know many of these people who are. We right. knew one personally who, right. you know, preached about how we, natural you know, he was. We know a lot of people. And then we met his freaking steroid supplier, and he's like, actually, no, he takes a shit ton of gear. Right. And it's like, come on, man. It's it's like, come are on, you that dude. insecure that you can't fucking admit like, you know, what you're doing? Absolutely ridiculous. So. I don't, I, I, it doesn't bother me like it probably used to bother me or like maybe the rants that we've gone on this show because here, let's be honest, like because of all the bad fitness information and terrible fitness professionals get, or, or people that call them fit professionals, but really all they are is just somebody on their IG that looks good in a bikini or looks good fucking inside the gym. They've proven that they can get themselves in shape. I mean, it's, there's an epidemic of this happening within fitness. I mean, when you look at a majority of the people putting out information, it's somebody who has put enough discipline and work into getting themselves in phenomenal shape and now they've considered themselves a fitness professional or they're providing fitness advice and they're making a lot of money doing it online. Now, that doesn't make me angry. All it did for me a few years ago when I saw how crazy this was was show that there's an opportunity. I saw an opportunity that wow, a majority of these people giving, and I say a majority because there are still some people out there that are providing really valuable content that's out there. They're just the minority. And so it, it provided an opportunity for Mind Pump. I mean, if it wasn't for all these shitty people giving advice, we wouldn't have a really good, we wouldn't have a, a platform or a business right now. We really wouldn't because it's because of all the shitty information out there. And I think that's how somebody should handle it. Instead of getting angry about it, shaming them, fucking hating on them, like do something about it. Provide some really good information for people out there and be that light, you know? And it's just, and know that it's tougher that way because you're not using all the tricks that they're using to get people to follow and pay attention. But I don't really, I don't really hate on it. I don't really have this like, you know, oh, fuck, I can't believe they're doing that. Or this, it's like, well... Yeah, it's definitely on the consumer. It's on the the person that's um, you know seeking information from people, and like uh, us, us being able to provide more education definitely helps, and like more people that are out there, <clears throat> you know, kind of addressing this this issue just to provide better information is is obviously going to be the best way to do it. Uh, but the thing is, like people that get in super awesome shape like that, a lot of times the next 
the next like thing that follows that is all these people that are watching and they want to go in that same exact formula that got them there. And so it's like, they're going to hit them up like constantly. Oh, what'd you do? What'd you do? It's like, it's, it's just human nature to kind of see somebody go through a, a, a metamorphosis like that and think that that's going to, you know, directly apply to their life. It, so I, so you're free to do whatever you want, but uh, I'm going to call it out. If I, some of you are, Slimy. Some of you fitness influencers are yeah, slimy. People that take advantage of that. Slimy, lying, you know, fucks. And I can't. And I love calling you out because, you know, you could shine shine some light on that slime, and it usually will, you know, it'll die. Like I'll give you a great example. Okay, whenever the Kardashians give fitness information, I want to <laughs> rip my hair out of my head because here they are. They're wearing you know, squeams or you know, waist trainers. Extremely dangerous. Have nothing to do with fitness. Oh, look what I did to get this wonderful waist. Or look at these exercises I did to get my wonderfully round butt, which in reality they bought. They went, to, they went and got butt implants, but they're lying and telling girls that these are the exercises and this is the workout that I do. It's just slimy. <laughs> yeah. It's just lying and slimy. And I don't like anybody in, in anywhere that just lies and is slimy. Well, I think, that, I think that way makes all of us upset. I think that's an extreme example of the question here because I, I think there's more people. Well, I mean, then the whole common like, Hey man, I took these pills and got and lost 25 pounds of body fat and got shredded or yeah. hey man, this is the exercise I did that got my legs up to, you know, this big or th- my arms this big in 4 weeks yeah, to shred. Yeah, buy, you know, buy this, buy I that. I think what- I think this this is going to die soon too. So when Instagram came out, there was this huge flux like from companies like Shreds that came out. Uh, a lot of my peers in the MPC IFBB world uh, it was really common once you won a few shows, got a little bit of a following, a supplement company picked you up, and then now you're, uh, every other post is a picture of you taking your supplements after your post-workout, and then here's my coupon code, swipe up, and all this stuff. You still see it, but I think it's dying. Um, 95% of those people that you see doing that don't make fucking shit. They make hardly any money doing that. So I, I think they're even figuring out. I think it was like one of those things monkey see, monkey do. They see all these people yeah. doing it. So they, oh, and he's big and he's popular. Oh, I'm I, this is the route. Oh, I see yep. you know so and so who's you know Mr. Olympia and he's got all these followers and he's promoting his supplement company and his t shirt line. All these companies like dude, those guys don't make shit, dude. They don't make hardly anything. They're, most of them are living at home still with mom and dad. It's all and, flash in the pan right. shit. Right, and I think people are starting to figure that out. Like slowly but surely that's getting exposed and they're starting to put it together that, that that's not the route. And I think that we're going to see... Plus there seems to be some backlash. Right. Or you're starting to see some backlash where uh, I, I used to see these ads and underneath it people would ask questions and get excited. Now I'm seeing people underneath it going this is bullshit or why would you say that or that doesn't work. I love it. Well, you said this before, Sean, it's such a great point that Mind Pump could have came out three years ago and been Keto Pump, you know, and could have been the name of it. And then we attached ourselves to a keto supplement and we probably would have made more money faster than we have right now that route. But it's not the long game. No, no, no. It's not the long game at all by by doing something like that. But that's a way to take advantage of the market. The market's telling you right now, and we called that too way back when that watch what happens with keto. Watch all the supplements came out. You know, us it, we're not the we're not like a bunch of geniuses. A lot of other people saw that too, and they were sm- and they were smart when you from a business standpoint. They attached themselves to it. They attached to a supplement. They're probably making a fuck ton of money right now. Eventually, that stuff will, will shift yeah. also. And when it does shift, you know, you're going to see companies like ourselves that have stayed around still because of that versus people, they, those same people will probably hop to the next trend. Mm-hmm. It's just gimmicks, man. You know, like you just got to be real informed as a consumer whether or not this is, feels and smells like a gimmick. It's probably the case. Right. Next question is from Ev Dunn. Tom Brady has a sleepwear line with bioceramic material that will supposedly release your body's mechanisms to enhance recovery. Do you give this any clout? Speaking of, we're talking about gimmicks. I know. And yeah. then this, and then great, this great. I mean, we didn't plan these questions yeah, this way. It just kind of naturally flowed into each other. Yeah. It's nice. I mean, and I'm glad we're talking about this. We got the Super Bowl coming up this yeah. weekend with Let's... Tom Brady. A lot of stuff around him. 
uh, around his diet, around his his exercise routine that he's doing, and the latest thing is his partnership with Under Armour and this bio ceramic yes bio ceramic material uh, that puts off uh, infrared. Right now, here is an example, and this is why I really liked when we interviewed the Juve guys, mm-hmm. and, and and they really put me on to uh, this game, right? Like, Because I'd heard of infrared before and I'd heard that there's some positive benefits behind it. And they talk about that there's a difference between you know, the the positive benefits that you hear a lot of these companies making money off and then like the therapeutic dose of infrared and what some of these like high-end infrared like Juve or infrared saunas are, right. pro- are producing. And so, and that's what he put us on to was like, listen, again, like science always does, some good science comes out. We find out that infrared has these positive benefits for circulation and for skin and for recovery. And then so everybody starts jumping on these red lights because it looks like infrared. Well, mm-hmm. no, and you are getting some of that. So if you're getting some of that, I can claim those benefits. This is an example of that, right? Yes, it is. So, so uh, far infrared or infrared is a form of radiation. And whenever you... Most materials will do this, by the way. If, they, if you heat them up with your body, they'll reflect it back, and some of it will come back as as this infrared radiation. Now, there are studies that show that far infrared has some potential benefits. Again, if you look back, if you want, you can go back and listen to our episode where we interview the founders of Juve. They cite some of these studies, and they are legit when it comes to skin issues, when it comes to there's some interesting stuff with testosterone, there's some interesting yeah, stuff recovery. with recovery. But there's a you got to have a certain dose, right. okay? So I'm going to use another analogy just so this makes sense. We all know that X-rays uh, are can be carcinogenic, right? You don't want to go get blasted with a bunch of X-rays all in a row because we know that that is not good for your body. So it's like you break your wrist, you go to the doctor, they X-ray you, and there's a certain amount of X-rays that have to come through that machine in order to create that X-ray image. Did you guys know that when you peel clear tape, when you peel open the the clear tape or whatever, you take off the roll. It actually produces X-rays. No, it didn't. It does. The act of ripping it, the tape off and the glue creates X-rays. Look this up. This is common science. Is that is that that, that static electricity feeling that you get when you tear open stuff like that? I get that uh, with my, that's my, a different. But, oh, there's, that's but different? X-ray, it does produce X-rays. And I think peeling a banana creates X-rays. <laughs> are they going to cause cancer in you? Are they cause no? The dose is so goddamn small, it doesn't even count. So this material that they're creating on these clothes. They're, you know, they're 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 mixing it with the ceramic material. Mm. Supposedly, it emits, uh, you know, far infrared radiation back at your body. It Most smells materials smells a lot like good marketing to yep, me. Yep, yep. Oh no, it's it's brilliant yeah. marketing because all they have to do is show the science that yeah. one little aspect. All they have to do is say, here's the studies that show that infrared improves these different things, and then they have to show, here's the study that shows that our clothing creates far infrared and then that's it they don't have to say anything else everybody right. else does their own they they deduce that right oh shit study says it works yeah. this creates it therefore Cause this is what effect. i'm gonna do yeah. it doesn't work that way here's another example i could create right now a homeopathic supplement that contains testosterone 100 percent. i could sell it and it'd be perfectly legal so homeopathic products contain microns of an effective ingredient so what they would do is they would take like one milligram of testosterone and they would throw it in, let's say, a swimming pool full of water and then they would extract that and then they'd say, okay, this teaspoon of water has some testosterone. Of course it does. A super, super, super duper small amount because one gram was thrown in this entire swimming pool and that's what homeopathic medicine is. This, uh, but it's not going to do shit for it's you, like obviously. the ultimate placebo. Well, it won't do shit for you because take, it's not enough. Take it a step further. This is, just, again, brilliant marketing by Under Armour. What do you do when you think, like, I bet you they, they came up with this product because of the response that everyone's thinking about. Oh, my God, Tom Brady's 40 years old. Yeah. Everyone's talking what about- What is he doing? What he's got to be having some kind of crazy recovery. Right. He's. You think that he's been using that shit for the last 10 years? Oh, Get the fuck out of here. That, no, product just was, that. that product was just created last week, dude, or whatever <laughs> it was. Like, he's not, he hasn't been- and using that to get him to where his, he's at right now. His diet has a much p- bigger role, and he does have an interesting diet. I don't think it's a special diet. I don't think everybody's going to do that diet and get the same effects. But I think what he's identified with his diet is that he's identified foods that he has immune responses to or intolerances to, and eliminating those redu- reduced his inflammation, which is true. You do that with anybody. You take out the foods that their body has an immune response to. They're going to have less inflammation. The clothes, no. 
I don't think so. Unless I see a study that shows that this particular piece of clothing is producing these effects. Don't show me a study that that shows that it produces don't a show little me bit sh- of infrared. Don't show, yeah, don't show me a study that shows that infrared has all these positive benefits and then show that your shirt has infrared yeah. in it and that's your... That's it's your, how much infrared... It's reflective material. It's not even producing infrared. No, mo- I, a lot of clothing will actually do that. So, yeah, sorry, it's gimmicky. But... Under Armour will sell a shit ton because oh man yeah. he's a badass right he's a phenom he's commercials Brady awesome over yeah. he's the yeah. second best quarterback of all his and when he wins this <laughs> when he wins this next I wish that were true Sal yeah. 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 sorry when he wins this next Super Bowl bro <laughs> again yeah. for sure that's watch these sales definitely go up. buy stock and I Under bet Armour. you we, I bet you we see this commercial during Super Bowl for sure so I mean <laughs> do just, you guys think yeah. that there'll be some backlash though. With this particular shirt? No. You don't no, think so? Not at all. people want not like, at all, bro. Pipe. Okay. Here's why here's why. Dude, it, performance is a different category. Like, you know, when you go to the sports, like that's the thing. There's all this gimmicky shit. Well, remember that just the, gets through well the so he was do you know that part of this started from that he was wearing a, a sleeve for uh, Remember the copper? Yeah, the copper right, sleeve. Right, he, he was wearing a, a, a sleeve to help speed up recovery on like one of one of his shoulders, I don't remember mm-hmm. elbow or something that happened. And so it, that had that helps promote this right so yeah. and now this is the, the the full body suit going into bed or your pajamas sure. or whatever that has all of it so <laughs> and here here's the thing though here's the argument for it is that it it is it's going to be more positive than negative like well, yeah, it, if you think it works right right if it, yeah. if, if it, it probably gives, will right if it gives a little bit of, of, of positive benefits it's still better than none and so if you're somebody who has the money to just kind of throw and this is how i feel about a lot of supplements yeah it ain't gonna hurt you yeah like if you've got money and that's why it'll do okay because it's not gonna it actually may detriment because we do know this uh i'll make this bet all day long um is that good sleep is more important than infrared far infrared rays you're going to get from your pajamas and we know statistically speaking studies will show that sleeping with less clothing on is better than sleeping with more clothing on for sleep quality so there you go so if you want to save some money and fucking get more anabolic and sleep naked. recover mm-hmm. yeah sleep in your underwear sleep naked balls free. and that's 100 percent proven to improve sleep quality so that's a, that's a good way to argue but under Armour, you got some other good stuff. So if you want to talk to Mind Pump, give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, uh, keep, check keep shooting. Check it out. Go to our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. We've got workout videos on there. We've got all kinds of demos. We got a webinar. I think this is going to come up when this drops. Our webinar should have already been recorded, where we answer some questions. Very interesting stuff. Check that out on YouTube. Um, and subscribe to our channel because we post new videos all the time. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.